guys, welcome to Church Online. We are so happy that you have joined us today. We are going to be continuing our Ready, Set, Go series. Take out your notebooks and lean into the Word of God as we continue with the series. It's so awesome to have you here. And um, I believe it's no coincidence that you're in God's house this morning. God wants to speak to you. If you haven't heard this before, the Lord loves you. He's got a plan for your life. And it's our absolute honor and privilege to serve you God's word today. And I'm believing that as we connect, as we lift our faith, as we trust God to move, that we're going to see great things happen in and through your life in 2020. Four. Well, for those of you I haven't had the privilege of meeting, my name is Dino, as Kelly mentioned. Uh, we lead the church, and it's an honor to serve you today. And so we are continuing and wrapping up our series on Get Ready. It's Ready, Set, Go. Everyone say Ready, Set, Go. Ready, Set, Go. And this is the final installment of this series. And then next week, Sunday, is Vision Sunday. And we're kicking off the, the, the month of Vision Month with Vision Sunday. And it's more than just a sermon. It's more than just a service. It's a time where our church gathers together and we align our hearts with the vision of the house. Where what God has spoken into the heart of our house for 2024, we want to impart into the lives of our people. And so you got to know that the grace that's on this house is the grace that's on your home. And so we've already spoken a little bit about this. Our word for the year is overflow. Everyone say overflow. And so what we are believing is that every single person in 2024 would overflow with joy and peace as we trust in the Lord. So next week, Sunday is a big Sunday in the life of our church. If this is your home, to make sure that you're in the house. If you want to find out more about us, it's the best Sunday to be present because we're going to be talking about what we're going to do, where we're going to do it, what God has spoken. So Vision Sunday, don't miss out. Last week, we spoke about how many people often get ready, get set, get ready, get set, get ready, get set, but so, so, so few actually go. Well, we're going to be the church that goes in Jesus' name. We're going to respond to the voice of God. We're not just going to get ready. We're not just going to get set. We're going to go in 2024 for all that God has for our families, our community, for our nation. We believe God's got something great. And, and we spoke about how we need to take our next steps, and everyone has a next step. And your first step, if you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, would be to receive Him as your Lord, Savior, and King. We say that that first step is stepping into the kingdom of God. We step into the kingdom not because we don't have any sin. It's not the absence of sin, but the presence of Christ that allows access to His unshakable kingdom. Are you with me this morning? So we all got next steps, and we said each one of us need to take some next steps. And so if you've stepped into the kingdom, now maybe your next step is to join the local family. Get planted in a local church. That's what Jackie was talking about, growth track and, and joining a view group. It's where we get together and we, we pray for one another and we encourage one another and we discuss God's word. Maybe you're part of the family. Take your next step and join the army. Say, I'm going I'm to be helping build church so that other people can know there's another way to live. Jesus died to save their souls and that you can come as you are. Maybe you're on the army and in the army, maybe your next step is to put your hand up and say, you know what? I want to be a shepherd. I actually want to live for others greater than myself. I actually want to take care of other people and help lead. Whatever next step you need to take, it's not how big or small the step. It's not how quick or slow the step. It's the direction you're walking. So I want to encourage you this morning to ask yourself the question, what direction am I walking? Well, you've already come to the house of the Lord, so I believe you've taken a great next step. And I'm going to be teaching this morning how to hear God's voice. But before we pray and before we teach, I want to read, uh, just reflect on a moment when God spoke to a young man in the Old Testament. And I'm really praying that that moment would take place again here in the 845 service. I'm praying that God would speak. You wouldn't just hear a voice of a man on a stage. You would hear your father's voice from heaven and that you know that he's talking into your heart and into your mind. The account is 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 7. It says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Eli realized that the Lord had been calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there, calling as the, at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. I pray that we would echo that prayer today. We would just say to our Heavenly Father, Lord, 
my heart is open. My mind is open. Lord, you speak. You are not my servant. I am your servant. I am listening. Won't you speak into my heart? So come on, let's pray today. Jesus, we love you and we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. I lift every person before you right now and I, I declare, in Jesus' name, that our hearts are open, our minds are receptive to everything you want us to learn today and everything you're calling us to do. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, that the doors would fly open in our lives and we would welcome you in. We would invite you to take your rightful rule and reign in our hearts and lives. As we receive your word, we're saying we're not going to just get ready and get set. Lord, we're going to run with what you reveal in Jesus' name. And, and so God, we pray right now, speak, Lord. We, your servants and your children, we are listening for your voice. We're not saying, Lord, bless our plans. We're saying, Lord, show us yours. I lift up anyone right now that's a little anxious or worried. God, you would touch their hearts in Jesus' name. Encourage them, build them up. Give them a vision of a great future. We just take captive every thought that the enemy has lied to them, that they don't have a future, they don't have any worth, they don't have any value. Those are all lies from the enemy. Today, we stand on the truth of your word that we are more than overcomers because you died for us. In Jesus' precious name, all God's people said, amen, amen. Well, it's my privilege to be serving you today. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning six ways how to hear the voice of God, how to hear God's voice. I don't know if you've ever asked that question. How do I hear the voice of God? How do I know what God is saying? How do I know what God wants me to do? And what's my next step? Anyone else? Not me. I just, you, know, you guys are just all with the Lord, 24-7. When I first started serving Jesus, I, I, I never heard an audible voice ever in my life before, but everyone said they heard from the Lord. I said, well, do you have his number? I don't know. I just, can I give him a call? Back then it was BBM or Mix It. <laughs> hey, boop, boop, Mix It Corp. Anyone else? It was BBM or Mix It. I'm saying, I don't, I don't hear God's voice that way. Well, the first step to hearing the voice of God is not opening your ears, it's opening up your heart. And Kelly quoted the scripture, so rightly so, and she didn't know what I was going to be teaching today from what scripture, but my initial scripture is Proverbs chapter 3. Yeah, come on, somebody. That's how unified we are. Amen. I'm going to read three versions of the scripture, just two verses of each. It says, Proverbs 3 from verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord, everyone say, with all, with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Who will straighten your paths? Not you. He will straighten your paths. The New International Version says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make path, your path straight. The New Living Translation says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. But it says, Seek his will in all. All you do, not just on a Sunday morning, but in everything you do, in your studies, in your work, in, in, in your marriage, in your relationships, in everything you do, seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Three words they stand up to me, acknowledge, submit, and seek. And so we get to hear God's voice more clearly, even before we learn how to hear His voice, when we don't open our ears, we open our hearts. I'm saying, I acknowledge that you are Lord. I seek you and I submit to you. You have authority in my life. You're not just my savior who saved me to go to heaven. You're my Lord, which means you are my leader. I am not yours. I'm not saying, Lord, you become more like me. I'm saying before I even hear your voice, I want to say this is my posture. Lord, I just want to become more like you. I just want to hear your voice. Your plan is far better than my plan. Your will is far greater than my will. And so before we even hear his voice, I think it's important that we posture our heart to say that you are not my servant, Lord. I am yours. And I believe that when you have that posture, when you say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. And I'm not just going to, you know, I don't know if you get tired of speaking to your children and they don't do what you come on. I just keep on, just glare if they're sitting next to you. Like, just keep on speaking. But sometimes you go, it's mucha prat. Well, I believe God speaks continually, but he speaks more clearly when he knows we're going to run with what he's asking us to do. When you have a posture of, Lord, I'm going to go, I'm going to run, I'm going to carry, I'm going to, I'm going to follow through. When I changed my heart, I wasn't just listening for the sake of listening. Someone once said this. Uh, they said that God does not speak to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. That he speaks so that we can follow, and when we follow, he straightens our paths. You're with me this morning. So I want to teach you six ways, real quick, six ways to hear God's 
voice. Come on, somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, come on, somebody. Six ways to hear God's voice. Zach, are you ready? You ready? He's taking notes. The first way. This is the highway. This is the highway. I just had to wake my son up right now. (laughs) Come on, Jesus. This is the highway for God's voice in your life. If you ever wanted a clear way to hear his voice, this is the highway. It's the word of God. If God's word is closed, closed, so is his mouth. His word needs to be opened. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. D.L. Moody says this. He says, I never saw a useful Christian who was not a student of the Bible. I never saw an effective, useful Christian who was not a student of God's word. Now, it may start out as discipline and then grow into devotion. So you need to choose to learn God's word. You're not going to be, oh, trip one, two, oh, revelation. Oh, just thank you, Jesus. You know, one day that's just going to be on your coffee table and you're just going to, it's going to on your head right there and you just look in the mirror, try and read it back. I don't know. It's not going to happen like that. You know what it's going to take? It's going to take intentionality. It might take some sacrifice that you might need to say no to something, maybe to sleep. Come on, Jesus. But I promise you, I'd rather be sleep deprived than God deprived. I want to hear my father's voice. My future depends on it. And people depend on us hearing God's voice. Our nation depends on Christians hearing the voice of God to us in heaven on earth. It's not our will. It's not the church's plan. It's God's will. How are we going to usher in heaven if we don't hear his voice? You're with me this morning. So it may take some sacrifice, but you need to be intentional. And it might, might start with discipline, but I know it's going to grow into devotion. So I want to encourage you, get a good study Bible. Get a good that you understand. Don't get the Greek one if you're not Greek. It's all Swahili to me. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> but get a Bible that you can read and understand and it comes alive to you. Get a Bible that helps teach you. I love it. Our young people are constantly phoning and WhatsApping me. What does the scripture mean? What does that mean? I love it. They're hungry for God's word. Can I encourage you to get a Bible that you can understand, a study Bible? We can spend thousands on TVs, thousands on subscriptions, but we won't spend hundreds on the word of God. It's the greatest investment you'll ever make. It's the highway for God's voice in your life. It will touch your marriage. It will bless your children. It will lead your business. God's voice is the, the word of God is the highway for his voice in your life. Find a great Bible that you can learn. A lady by the name of Jane Johnson sends it a little bit more subtly than A.W. Towser. Uh, he, she says, I could simply share with you the treasures I've uncovered, but I'd rather give you the treasure map instead. I'd rather give you the treasure map. Christianity is not this boring faith. It's an adventure. But this is the blueprints for our future. It's not our great ideas. It's not our great plans. We are not inviting God on this journey. He's inviting us to what he has planned. And this is the treasure map. This is the blueprints for our future. The word of God is the highway for his voice. I also want to encourage you uh, not just to look for the promises in God's word, but to look for the processes in God's word. You know, I I believe in the promises of God. And if you don't memorize some of the promises, I want to encourage you to memorize some of the great promises God has in his word. But don't only just live in those select few verses. I promise you, God has so much more than a couple of promises in his word. A.W. Tauser, here we go. He says this. He says, the word of God, well understood and religiously obeyed, is the shortest route to spiritual perfection, maturity. And we are not to select a few favorite passages to the exclusion of others. Here we go. Listen to this. Nothing less than a whole Bible can make a whole Christian. It's not just a couple of favorite verses. So start a Bible study where you read chronologically through the Bible, through a book in the Bible, and I promise you, God's Word begins to speak to you in new ways. Are you with me this morning? It comes alive in a new way. God's Word is the highway for His voice in your life. That's why Bible, the Word tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, that the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Bible is the only book that reads you while you read it. It's a reflection of who you are and God's character displayed. Isaiah tells us that as the heavens fall to the earth and doesn't return empty, so my word goes out and never comes back empty, never returns void, but accomplishes every word that I sent it to do, every purpose for which I sent it. That's why when you leave this place in four, maybe five hours time, amen, scholars of God's word, you guys double dip. And when we launch the 5 p.m. service, you got a triple dip in Jesus' name. We're taking attendance. Amen. 
when you leave this place, long after you leave this place, and you forget the sound of my melodic voice and my shiny head due to the humidity. Bless you. God's word is still working in your heart because it's alive, it's active, and never comes back empty. As you open your heart, as you submit your mind to him, as you say, God, I'm going to do what you ask me to do, it continually works. It works while he's sleeping. God's always working, John 5, 17. My father's always at work, and so am I, Jesus replied. So even as you receive this word today with your ears, let it go into your heart, and it'll continue to do the work. God's word is the highway. The first way to hear God's voice is through his word. You with me this morning? Second way that we hear God's voice is through prayer. It seems very obvious, but prayer, again, we've said this consistently, prayer is not about information. Prayer is about access. So when we talk to the Lord, we're not telling him something he doesn't know. He knows everything. He's omniscient, all-knowing. When we bring our requests before God, we're not telling him something he didn't know, our sins. And when we confess them to the Lord, it wasn't like, oh, I skipped that one. It just occurred to me now. No, he sees everything, knows everything. So when we pray, we're not telling him information. We're just giving him access to those areas of our lives. Lord, I ask for forgiveness, so I give you access to my soul. Wash me clean. I ask you to be in my marriage. I give you access to my marriage. I give you access to my kids. I give you access to my business. I give you access to my, my, my thoughts, my dreams. Uh, I give you access to innovative thoughts. I, I give you access. Jesus teaches us how to pray. He said, well, we learn pray as you can, not as you can't. Some people are too intimidated to pray, but just pray as you can. If your prayer is help, pray help. It's a great prayer. I think the word help, prayer, really meant is far better than a long theological liturgy of all these, thus saith the Lord of the, ah, yeah, ah. Might sound good to our ears, but I promise you it falls on deaf ears in heaven if it doesn't mean sincere. You say, Lord, I really need your help today. God, I really, I really need you to lead me in this meeting, in this interview, as I'm studying. I submit to you. I seek your will. I acknowledge your presence in all I do. I need you. I think the Father's heart can respond to a prayer like that. It's not fancy words. It's a sincere heart. Matthew 6, Jesus teaches us. He says, and when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues on the street corners and seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you, some translations say, in public. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Hear his heart in this. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask them. It's not about information. He knows what you need before you ask him. It's about access. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses for the old school as we forgive those who have trespassed, trespassed, trespassed rather, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I don't presume God's protection over my family. I pray God's protection over my family every morning so that they can give him more glory, that they would grow up in his house and they would know his name and they would let more people know there's another way to live. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So if prayer is so simple, why is it so difficult? A guy named Tyler Statton uh, wrote this book, uh, Praying Like Monks But Living Like Fools. Great book. He says, prayer means risk, the risk of facing silence when we're addicted to noise. It's the risk of facing a God we've mastered talking about, singing about, reading about, and learning about. But only in prayer, we now come face to face with Him as we really are, not who everyone else thinks us to be. In prayer, we run the risk of hearing silence when we're addicted to the noise. See, prayer, we can't hide behind anything in prayer. He just sees us as we are, and He still loves us all the same. I want to say that prayer is the language of the humble. It's antithesis of anything prideful. The measuring stick for pride in my own life, the measuring stick for pridefulness in my own life is reflected by how little I pray. I know that I'm growing prideful in my own strength, in my own strategy, in my own plans, when I don't pray as much as I used to. So when you find yourself not praying a lot 
It's actually a reflection of how prideful you are in your own strength. And I see that in my own life. That's when the Holy Spirit speaks to me. He says, listen, this is not built on the strength of man, but the Spirit of God. And you need to lean into him to be a great husband, be a great dad, be a great mom or son or wife. The less I pray, the more I lean on my own strength. The more I pray, the more I put it in his hands. Little is, ha- little is much in the hands of God. You're with me this morning. Prayer, God speaks powerfully through prayer. He speaks through his word. He speaks through prayer. Third one, he speaks through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is ministering to the world. In Galatians 5.25, he says, Since we, being believers, we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Whatever you live by, you keep in step with. So if you live by your salary, you'll keep in step with wherever the salary is. If you live by relationship after relationship, wherever the relationship is, you keep in step with that. Where's this relationship going? I'm just keeping by because whatever you keep, live by, you keep in step with. But if you live by the Spirit as believers, you keep in step with the Holy Spirit. It's not my plans. Lord, what do you want to have done? And I discern, God, what do you want for my life? And I ask him to bring out the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You can't force fruit. It can only be formed and not forced. And so he speaks through his Spirit, where his Spirit fills us from the inside out, and he brings out great fruit. Paul writes a great, a great apology and uh, not to say sorry, an apology is the defense of our faith. A, a, a great apology on the work of the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read a couple of verses. He does a great job of just putting it all together. He says from verse 5. You guys okay this morning? We're good. It says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Who wants life and peace? It comes by following the Holy Spirit, that unction in your spirit. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's Lord, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of this sinful nature can never please God. But you, talking to believers, are not controlled by your sinful nature. You're a new creation as we've given our heart to the Lord. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. It goes on to say, And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin and the curse, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Here's His conclusion. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to your sinful nature. Uh, sinful nature urges you to do, to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. He says, for if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. God speaks through his word. He speaks through prayer and God speaks through his Holy Spirit. Now, we believe that God can give you and does give you and will give you a heavenly language. This is the perfect prayer that intercedes. You won't understand it. And so there's a, there's a difference. There's, a, there's the gift of speaking in a heavenly language, and that's a prophetic word spoken to the church that requires an interpretation. That's the gift of what you may have heard of tongues. The gift of tongues is a prophetic word spoken in a heavenly language that someone needs to interpret in a setting like this. There's the gift of tongues, and there's the grace of tongues. The grace of tongues is a heavenly language that's a personal language to you and God. This is, if you desire it, the Lord says, He will give you your own unique language to speak with Him. The enemy doesn't know what it means. You don't know what it means. But your spirit testifies that God is speaking to, He speaks through His spirit. You're with me this morning. He speaks through His spirit. There's a grace and there's the gift. He speaks through the word, prayer, speaks through His spirit, and He speaks through people. He speaks through people. I promise you. We say it all the time. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. This is why view groups are so important. This is why serving on team is so important. Because God uses other people's gifts to minister to you. And then he uses your gifts to minister to others. 1 Peter 4.10 says this. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve yourselves. No. Why did God give you that gift? He says, I've given you that gift to serve yourself others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Acts 2.42, when the early church was just born, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to prayer, to fellowship, and to breaking of bread. 
Fellowship, as we gather like this in small groups and on Sundays, is an integral part because God has given someone else a gift to heal you. And God has given you a gift to heal someone else. That's why Christianity is a team sport. That's why Christianity, we are a body. We're not just a part. You with me this morning? He speaks through the word. He speaks through prayer. He speaks through spirit. He speaks through people. There's only two more. I'm going to rattle through these last two. How much time have I got? Three hours. Great. I believe God speaks through nature. I really do. There is something about getting, I don't know if you've ever, guys, come on. When you just get out the city and you get around some trees and some hardy dogs, come on now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I know, we all know hardy dogs come from the place down under. <laughs> On a Saturday morning, the one day that you can see. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. But I believe God speaks through nature and his word tells us all the same. He says in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse not knowing God. I see God in nature. When I feel a bit overwhelmed or anxious or when I'm really, you know, contending on the half, behalf of our church and I intercede for your family and trusting God for permanent work for people and healing from cancer and deliverance and restoration, when I'm trusting God and I feel like, geez, God, it feels like, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if I have enough faith to really believe that you can move in that. You know what I do? I just walk outside and I look up and I just see how big the sky is. And then I remember how small the earth is in our galaxy. And how small our galaxy is in the universe, and the whole universe fits in his hand. And it just right sizes the power of my God, and right sizes the power of the problem, and I just get some more faith again. You know what, God, there's nothing you cannot do. You can totally heal that person. You can totally come through for that job. You can totally bring that child back to, you, to the house of the Lord. You can totally, nothing is impossible for you. I just walk outside, and I look at the stars, and I look at the sky, and I think, Jesus, Lord, you are so big. You are so great. Surely there is more. And it testifies to my faith. You with me this morning? The German polymath, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Rob, was that not bad? Goethe. Eh? He says this. He says, nature is God's living, visible garment. The famous agricultural scientist, George Washington Carver, says this. I love to think of nature as an unlimited broadcasting system through which God speaks to us every hour if only we tune in. If only we tune in. The team can join me. God speaks through his word. God speaks through prayer. Don't pray as you can't. Pray as you can. Don't forget to get a good Bible that you understand. If it's Swahili and you're not Swahili, it's not going to work out. He speaks through his word. He speaks through prayer. He speaks through his spirit, being yielded to his spirit, saying, not my will, your will be done. He speaks through people. He speaks through nature. And finally, I do believe God speaks through circumstance. He speaks through, come on now. Some people have, like, have lived a little bit of life with Jesus. They know that he speaks through circumstance and situations. Now, God does not cause all those situations. He, no, he doesn't cause it, but he can use it. He uses it for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Auntie Jenny uh, one of our founding pastors, she always says this, if you're in a tough season, pray this prayer. Lord, what do you want me to learn? Let me learn it quickly so I can get out of this place. What do you want me to learn, God? Even if the enemy, you know, I was talking to a friend this week, and it's so funny. He, uh, through business and what the enemy, you know, tried to do and you know, you could just see the attack on business. You could see the attack on what he was trying to just break things down. And you could actually see it. It was just crazy. The very thing the enemy wanted to use to harm his business, now, just 12 months later, God's using that very same element that he had to run, like get away from because it was toxic. That very same element he's using to save the business and actually take it to new levels. He said, I thought this was the devil. And it was back then. But God even used his plans to bless my family. <laughs> He said, it's Genesis 50, you've heard 2020 vision, you need 5020 vision. Genesis 50 verse 20, Joseph writes at the end of his life, what the enemy intended for harm, God intended for good to accomplish what's happening now, the saving of many lives. Sometimes we don't understand when we're in it, but even when it's over our head, it's still under his feet. 
as we stay faithful. Joseph started out with a big dream and then it fell into pits and then he was sold as a slave and then he held a broom and then he interpreted a dream. But he was faithful in, every, in the pits, in the prison, with the broom. He was faithful in every season. And then at the end of the season, he can see, wow, actually you were preparing me all the way along. God speaks through circumstance. I'm reminded of the scripture, this account of where Elijah hears from God in 1 Kings 19. You guys might know it well. It said, then a great powerful wind tore through the mountains, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then an earthquake came, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. After that came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper. Verse 13 says, when Elijah heard it, he pulled the cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here? Now, I believe God both shouts and he whispers. He shouts salvation for all and anyone call, who calls on my name. You will be saved in Jesus' name. Oh, that's a big shout. Let everyone know. Everyone know there's another way to live. Let everyone know that he died, that his grace abounds wherever, where the sin grace abounds even more. He's shouting salvation for anyone. Come as you are. He shouts that through all eternity. From the fall, you can see if you zoom out the meta narrative of God's word, he's shouting salvation, salvation, salvation to anyone and everyone who calls on his name. My God shouts, I died to save you. He shouts salvation. But I believe that he also whispers. He shouts salvation, but he whispers sanctification. Sanctification is the process by which we become more like Jesus. We be with him, we become like him, and do what he did. He shouts salvation, but he whispers sanctification. Do you know why he whispers sanctification? Because when you whisper, you need to draw close to the one who's speaking. So he wants you to come closer. So he speaks softer, so that you can lean into his voice. The most silent times in my walk with Jesus wasn't because he wasn't speaking. He was just speaking ever more quietly so I come closer to his heart. Sorry, Lord, what was that saying? Sorry, God, I can't hear you. I've got to gotta get rid of this noise. No, sorry. Guys, everyone keep quiet. Everyone keep quiet. Everyone. I've got to get closer because he's speaking. I just need to draw closer to his voice. He shouts, I died to save you. Then he whispers, come be more like me and I will make you new. I will teach you. I will form you. I will shape you. God speaks through His Word, through prayer, spirit, people, nature, and God speaks through circumstance. God's speaking today. What's He's telling you to do today? What's your next step this morning? It's your next step to take a step into the kingdom? You know of God, but you don't have a relationship with His Son. We become His children when we accept His Son. And you step into the kingdom. Say, Jesus, forgive me. Wash me clean. Make me new. I have faith, Lord, and I'm going to serve you. It says you become a child of God. Maybe your next step is joining a group, buying a Bible, spending some devotional time, setting time aside to hear His voice. I don't know what your next step is, but I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you'll be brave enough not to take a big one, not to take a fast one, but just order the direction of your steps. Take the next one and be faithful in that step. And take another one. As He speaks, be faithful in that step. And you'll start to see, as you look back, His faithfulness over your life. He's always been with you. He's always been leading you. He's always been guiding you. Come on, let's stand to our feet as we pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Come on, we need to stir up gratitude for God's word this morning. We are so grateful that you're always speaking. You're not a distracted father. You're not too busy for us. You have time for your children. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, Lord, that we would hear your voice. Not only would we hear it, you don't speak to be heard, you speak to be obeyed. And I pray that you would fill us with all courage. Holy Spirit, fill us with courage to follow the leading of your voice. Whether it's starting something new, whether it's ending some old things, whether it's pushing off the sinful ways, whether it's clothing ourselves in righteousness, whether it's forgiving that person, whether it's being generous towards another, whatever it is, God, we are making a commitment to hear your voice and then follow what you reveal. I lift every person before you now that's maybe entrapped in noise. It seems like there's so much distraction, you feel like there's no clarity, it's like a mist around you. I pray, Lord, that you would speak clearly into their, into their hearts and into their mind. They would hear your voice. They would respond. Say, yes, Lord, 
I say amen. I say your plan for my life, your will, your kingdom over my own. I submit, I seek, and I acknowledge you in all my ways. If you're here this morning and you need to give your heart to the Lord, you know you're not right with Jesus. The only way to enter the kingdom is to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me, wash me clean. And the Bible says he makes you new. You don't have to make yourself new. You don't have to sort yourself out. You just come to him as you are right now. You lift your heart before him and say, Lord, forgive me. I acknowledge that because you died and rose again, and I put my faith in you, that I too will become a new creation. If that's you here this morning, I'd love to see who I'm praying with today. And God's speaking to you this morning. He's saying, that's your next step. Your next step is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to step into the kingdom of light. That's you saying, Dino, you're speaking to me today. I want to pray that prayer. Would you kindly raise your hand and say, I'm praying that prayer this morning. That's my prayer I'm praying today. That's my next step. Awesome. I see that hand over there. I see that hand over there. Anyone else this morning? Raise your hand. You say, that's me. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus got hands in the middle. Anyone else you're saying, Dina, I'm praying that prayer. That's my next step. I'm giving my heart to the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's all pray together today, church. Not just with our words. Let's pray from our hearts. Let our hearts echo down the hallways of heaven. Let's pray with all faith with our brothers and sisters as they step into the kingdom of light. As they get resurrected into new life, they are not alone. They have a family praying with them. All of heaven is about to celebrate as we pray with faith. So come on, let's pray with zeal and fervency. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me and as me. Today, I ask you to forgive me, wash me clean, and I promise to worship you and serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Can we celebrate with a whole bunch of people who gave their hearts to God today? Oh, come on, Tigers, we can do better than that. Some people got saved this morning. I hope that word spoke to you and that you got something out of it. I would love to invite you to come and join us in person at Tigerberg High School. Our two services are 8.45 and 10.15. Have a beautiful week.